Welcome back, Hunters. I'm the Survival of This, and we return to the Hunter Classic with our Pikmin Bay Expedition Series. We're actually on to Episode 10 for the uh, Expedition Series, which I didn't realize we were already here. I know I was going to extend one more weekend, but I'll see how this episode goes and maybe consider a second weekend? I'm not sure yet. I'm still kind of weighing that in my mind, but I will have had the poll options for the next Reserve Expedition series up before these two have gone live. It's just that, I guess time flies as things sometimes go right. The last few episodes, again, the first attempts were a little rough, but last episode I don't think was too bad. We at least got one Magpie Goose, we got a Bantang, Water Buffalo, so we've gotten some stuff going on here. I'm just going to keep an eye around, listen out for more stuff that might fly over and see what we can kind of do. I also will have to remember to uh, check my scent eliminator because that's probably going to be wearing off soon too. Yeah, I don't think there's point in calling without hearing like any flock sounds. I mean, I can keep trying to see, but... Oh, that's definitely not a bird sound. Okay, we got a water buffalo. No, back up that way. Ah, do, do, do. Let me just try getting up and looking. Oh, I. No, that's not it. I thought I saw the big dark belly of one. Okay, so actually, it might be more out that way. Now, one thing that. I also got clued into the comments from, I think it was John Garcia mentioned it last week, is that the calls that you see on the Hunter Mate when you, like, pick them up are also affected by the tracking sound. So I thought how they would do it is there'd be a larger circle for, like, a general area, but I guess it's just a little more vague for where the animal came from with that call, perhaps. I don't know, I just thought it'd be handled a little differently so that it kind of feels like as you get better tracking... That circle closes in more to get a better location of where it came from. I guess maybe not, because it seems like it does always keep that same static size that ripples out words. Is that? I heard something over here. Maybe not. Okay, how's the Sentinelator? Oh, I've got one minute left, so I'll just wait till... Now, let me actually wait until I hear, like, uh, another flock coming by. Get full length out of these Eliminator sprays that I can. Yeah, but pretty quiet for what I thought would have been, like, clear open skies and flocks. Be moving about. Yeah, and I don't see movement up there about that buffalo call. So I don't know... Yeah, it might be working its way down to us, or just passing by up around the top there. Hmm. Surprised how silent it fell around here. Okay, yeah, there's a sent eliminator off. I think next weekend, what I'd probably focus on is really the uh, Rusa and the Samba. Samba or Sambar? I can't remember, what is it? That is Rusa Deer Sambar. Try to go for those guys more specifically, because I haven't really actually gotten very many of them, despite the entire run of the Expedition series. They've been ones where you do have to use the scent lures. Oh, there we go, there's a. I don't think I got any in from that. At least we saw a flock go by. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll give us spurts now. Sounds like there might be a few flocks going around. No, well, speaking of a flock going, basically coming in right over top of us. I don't think a single one broke off from that. Oh, no. We did have a few break off. Okay. Get that with the short range caller. Now, the problem is they're right on top of me, so I can't really look right up as I'm... Ah, I don't know if I wasn't close enough to de... No, I don't think it was that. It might have been... I think it is they're, like, looking down and spotting me and then flying off instead of, like, paying attention to the decoys out here. Because that's another pass where it's kind of tricky to do without a blind, and it's... Again, it can make this kind of hard to want to do more of. Actually, that's not even a uh, uniform. <laughs> eh, looks like just one, but at least it's another one. And thankfully, these guys do get washed into shore, so you can actually pick and collect them. So let's see how much that one's for. Ah, uh, maybe... No. Actually, these have a pretty far uh, collection radius. A 66 for this one! These things are money makers if you can actually get them in. Okay, so if they've been spotting me, I think I'll try using this little bush here. And it's hopefully some extra camouflage. But it is good to see that we are getting them down and... I do see now how these can be, like, so good for making GM. If you're getting, like, 40 to 60 per, 10 of them is... The only problem is, though, I think I have... If I want to do the Magpie Geese missions, I know the one I've got right now is I have to identify, like, calls from them. But the only way to do that, I think, is to have them actually landed... ...and able to, like, relax for a while. And that might be a little difficult to just let everything, like, line up for that. Oh, 
Yeah, I don't hear any flocks anymore. Okay. I just take a look around and see if there's anything animal activity wise that started wandering in or near here. And it doesn't really seem like it, does it? It seems like this is a pretty good spot where if you don't want to have interference from water buffalo, bantang, anything really, a tent just right back up on the hill like we've got. Decoys can all go right down the water. Oh, there's a flock right there. And that was a number of them broken off. I'm going to actually let them land because, again, if I can let this mission go through, then the next mission automatically activates. Although, I'm hoping I'll be hidden enough here. Yeah, there's one landing. There we go. Yeah, you guys just land, and hopefully they'll make some calls. I can identify them. We'll see the objective move forward. And then we can maybe get even the next mission done, too. I just don't know how long they've got to be, like, in the water before they might start making more sound. Okay, but there's you, just relaxing in the pool. Be nice if I could actually spot you and figure out if you're a male or a female. I think you're a male, though. I actually wonder, can I pull... If I have some already landed, could you actually have them help bring others in? seem like it. Yes, they're all just relaxing out there. They don't seem... Okay, so it looks like I got... Uh, that's my decoy there, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I've got one, two, three, four, five... I've got six out there. Wow. And I got even more off that. Okay, let that go through. Oh, you guys really don't want to make any calls? Yeah, I'm just going to stay right where I am, because this seems to actually work as a natural blind. Yeah, they're all landing. 
That's it. Okay. There was a call. So then do I need a second one? I'll just wait a little bit and see how this goes, because, again, the mission can roll over, but this is also a lot I'm picking up and just getting into one area. Okay, so... Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, got that one. Ah, oh, they picked me up and flew off. I guess they only land for so long. So then I guess you have to uh, naturally just have them landed somewhere and pick up some of the calls. Okay, well, I can try bringing some more in, let them land for a while and see. I don't know if I actually, they did pick me up or it's just like there's a time limit that they stay for. Ah, uh, 52. Not as good as the others, but again, we are pulling in some nice numbers from these guys. But I do think this little bush here is helping a lot. Because all the other ones, we saw they would start getting close, but then fly off. Whereas if I stick under here, they feel safe enough to come, land, and stick around for a bit. So yeah, if you guys are like me and don't have the funds for the full blind or that, this spot here does seem like it can help you get started with waterfowling for the magpie geese. Now it is a bit of a hike to get here, because uh, this is probably your closest lodge, and that is a little distance to travel for it. But yeah, I think I'm going to have to try to bring them in again, let them sit for a while, just register a call, that'll hopefully be that mission done, and then I can move on to the next step, whatever it is. But that's a little bit of why I sometimes dislike the mission structure of the game. Because you have to have specific things happen for you, and until they do, you can't really advance onto any other steps of it. That's why it can kind of feel like you tunnel vision yourself to only focusing on that one goal and you let stuff kind of slide around you. Eh, it might be quiet now, I guess because of that. The flocks are all past right now. I doubt there's anything actually wandering around here, but let me just take a little quick look and then... I'll go back into our little cover there. Yeah, I don't really see anything. And let me just make sure this is reloaded. Yeah, that is. Yeah, back down into our little bush of safety. Or our sneak bush. And we just have to wait till we hear more. Hopefully we can get maybe one or two more before the episodes end, but it does take a little bit of time. Yeah, I hear a flock coming in. Maybe what I'll do with the rest of the expedition series that I'll do, not just pick a bean bay, but the others, I'll just use all the GM I can get for that into like building this setup more. And then once all the expeditions are at their end, we can try to come back and see just how changed it is with like more decoys in place. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see once they go so far off, but nothing off of that flock. 
I don't hear any others at the moment. Oh, there's a flock coming by. It's actually kind of helpful to have them in front of the clouds so you can actually see where they are. anything off though. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Sounds like one's coming in. Oh, yeah, there it is. I was going to say, sound like one was coming in from behind us. Oh, that was a big flock over there. No, we're not getting anything broken off and coming in close, are we? Shoot, just seems like luck isn't on our side for some of these. I have to wait until I hear more or see them start coming in. But yeah, I think you could really ramp, uh, pull in... GM pretty quickly on these guys. Like, if you're able to bring in the majority of each flock you see, that's probably at least five animals, so there's it. Probably 300 or so GM. Just in that alone. Seems like we're having a hard time breaking flocks and getting them off to try and get closer. Come on, let's get one more chance in. Yeah, I don't hear anything right now. This really would, I think, be great for, like, a streaming thing. Like, I've mentioned how the hunter definitely works, or there's an aspect of the hunter that would work really well for streaming, where it's just, you're in a blind or a setup, and you're just chatting, waiting for stuff to, like, come in towards you. Waterfowling easily fits probably the top of that. 
It's just that I've got to get some more uh, decoys in place, build this up, so that way we can more reliably break stuff off. Because I'm pretty sure this works in tandem with the decoys out there to bring stuff in. Okay, stacks with that uh, being deployed air decoys in the area, with that the magpie goose flag lure. Impossible for one player to use both the flag and long range call at the same time. Only player cooperation required to reach maximal combined probability. Repeated calling is recommended to keep probability higher for as long as high flying birds present in the area. No effect on birds once they've broken off and are about to land. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Common use from clear scenarios where geese success is broken off, suddenly refuse to land, or fly within shock and range. Okay. I hear them. I think they're coming in from behind again. Either that or from through there. Hear him anymore. And how's the scent eliminator got for time? Uh, nine minutes. Yeah, I, just, I really want to get that second call, get this mission complete, and then that will let things advance further, but the game's not really leaning towards wanting that to happen, is it? <laughs> Yeah, and I don't hear any flocks at the moment, so let me just take a look around with the binoculars in case anything started wandering in. Don't really see or hear... I thought I was hearing something there that I was looking around for, but... Might have just been my imagination. Yeah, I guess with it misting like this, they aren't active right now. Shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah, I was hoping for one more. I can't even seem to get them to appear at all. But it definitely does validate a lot of people for how they were saying. Like, the magpie geese are a great source to, like, farm for GM. Once you get a setup made, you can start really kind of cranking it out if you have the time to. I think this uh, weekend alone, I mean, of course, with the water buffalo and the bantang, we've probably got at least two to three hundred GM from everything together, which is still a fair amount, when all things considered, with how it comes in. I was just hoping for one more flock I could try pulling in, but I don't think we'll get it in a timely manner. So we are going to wrap this episode of the Hunter Classic right up here. Thank you guys for joining me on another episode of the series. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. Next episode, and maybe the episodes after that, I'll see how things go. I do want to focus more on the deer species, because I haven't... Oh. Eh, maybe I'll try as we're talking. We'll see if anything comes in. Maybe I will actually postpone. I doubt we'll actually have anything break off. Yeah, I don't think a single thing broke off of that. Well, sounds like, though, another flock. It always is. Right when I want to wrap up, things kind of change a bit, isn't it? Well, I don't think... 
Oh, should I let them fully land? Nah, I don't think I... I'll let them fully land. That, and I don't think anything even happened for that. Okay, yeah. So again, we'll probably revisit this after a few expedition series, save some more GM up, buy more decoys, place them out, and just kind of watch how this grows or has grown from just the two decoys so far. I don't know if I'll pick up the blind because this spot seems like it kind of works okay without that, and the blinds are usually a pretty expensive one for, like, gear-wise. As you actually start, like, tallying up how much each little thing is, it kind of gets expensive quick for the Hunter Classic and stuff. But yeah, I'll have a poll out for the next uh, Expedition series soon, and that basically brings this episode to a close. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until I catch you all next video, Hunters and Survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.